Hi, my name is Mie Selvey and I'm a PhD student at Stockholm Resilience Centre. And today I'm going to talk about a new study where we present the first in-depth evaluation of a resilience assessment that we carried out in the Swedish municipality of Eskilstuna. And the resilience assessment is basically a collective learning process where you use the perspective of resilience thinking to increase your understanding of the system that you're interested in and its key dynamics and how social, environmental and economic aspects are interconnected. And then use this understanding to develop strategies for how to be better able to cope with change and continue to develop on a desirable trajectory. And the approach that we used is based on the Resilience Assessment Workbook by the Resilience Alliance. We then applied this method in a Swedish municipality, Eskilstuna, where we had the first Resilience Assessment Workshop in 2013, together with civil servants from different departments at the municipality. So both planners working with crisis management and with sustainable development, for example. And the question then was, what did the Resilience Assessment actually contribute to what they're already doing in the municipality? And what we found was that the Resilience Assessment bridged two areas of strategic planning in the municipality. So both crisis management and sustainable development. And these two functions had little cooperation at the time of the study. And it partially overlapped with both of them. So for example, even if crisis management already has a focus on coping with change, but from a shorter time perspective, this was something new for sustainable development. And on the other hand, having this longer time perspective on change and a broader systems per perspective, including the ecological dimension, that was something new for crisis management. And for both of these areas, these ideas about how complex systems change in often quite unpredictable ways was something new. And all in all, focusing on coping with change, but from a longer time perspective, and taking into account these complex dynamics, it helped the planners to address issues like climate change and financial instability, quite global and uncertain issues, and help them to, to highlight the need to prepare for different possible scenarios, not only what seems most likely from today's perspective. But we also encountered some challenges in this process. So for example, this concept of thresholds, which the planners saw potentially as quite useful to be able to identify where there are critical limits for maybe where ecosystem services in the city will decline. And it would be potentially quite useful to identify them, but difficult to know how. And it's also easy to lose focus of the, lose sight of the broader scale when the assessment is quite focused on the local context. And the Resilience Assessment Workbook also lacks guidance on how to design a participatory process, even if that is quite important for the outcome of the assessment. So in conclusion, we found that the resilience assessment bridged to sustainable development and crisis management in the municipality, and it contributed new ideas of how complex systems change and highlighted the need to prepare for surprise. And it also initiated a new project, a continued project where they look at food, the food system and how that can be made more resilient to global changes, which is a new area for municipal planning. And based on this, we think it's useful to continue to develop the resilience assessment for a planning audience through these types of learning processes between practice and science. And if you want to know more, please check out our, our um, paper. It's available online.